Hey guys, welcome back to Christian Today we're going to be talking about Washington's big win against the Cincinnati Bengals, 20 to 9. We've got some good things to talk about if you're a Washington fan at least, and you have, and we're going to have some, you know, iffy things to talk about. It wasn't all sunshine, okay? We had, we got a kind of lucky break though, which I kind of feel a bit bad calling lucky, but um, we'll get to it. But let's go ahead and start from the beginning. So, uh, how did we do? So we went out there. And in my opinion, I think that we definitely played better defensively than we played last. I think we played, I think in my opinion, we played better defensively than we did last week. Um, I do think our defense, uh, sorry, offense slacked off a bit. Um, but yeah, so we, what happened in the game? I'm just going to go ahead and do a little summary of the game. I, don't, I, I never know how to get into these things because um, normally I'm just, you know, mad that we're losing. Um, but so what happened was they went out there. We got a touchdown. Well, actually, the first half we played pretty badly. Yeah, it was seven to nine at halftime, so it's only a two-point game. But we look at we had one good offensive drive, and that was the one that went for a touchdown, and that was really all because of the forty-four-yard bomb to um, Terry McLaurin. I'm pretty sure that was in that drive which yeah was took a lot of talent from alex smith i mean that wasn't like a dump off that ran he literally threw it 44 yards on the field which is really good to see an old guy doing that um and and um that was really the only good drive we had that first half okay and yeah get a touchdown it was good enough to keep us in the game and then you look at the Bengals; they had three drives inside of the red zone okay well sorry uh, they they really had I think it was four drives inside the red zone. Um, two of the one of them was a missed field goal. Another one was a strip fumble. It was a forced fumble that went for a touchback. Another one was a field goal, and of course they had that touchdown. I'm trying to remember if that touchdown was if I'm in, I don't know. All I know is that they had two red zone trips that should have come up with points. I mean, well, they came really close to. They should have made the field goal, and they. And, and really that, I mean, he was like, Joe Burrow was right next to the end zone. He had to reach his hand up. So really, we got kind of lucky, um, mainly because Chase Young, I mean, he pumped the ball out. He's pretty good at doing that. We saw that back in week one. He knocked the ball out of Chase went, um, Carson went to the end. I'm trying, I'm not, I mean, I'm not being a downer. I'm just saying we came really, really close to being worse. It, you look at that first half and you see nine points, or really, if he had made it, if um, they had made their field goals, it, okay, if Randy Bullock, I think that's the name of the Bengals kicker. Had made all of his kicks, it would have been a 20 to 16 game. He missed two field goals and an extra point, and he's probably the reason that they lost that game. Other than the fact that Joe Burrow obviously got injured, which I feel kind of bad about, um, because you know, I mean, obviously it was terrible. He tore his ACL in his left knee. Oh, which is never good. He's going to be out for the year. Now, this he is the third quarterback this season who has gotten year, not year ending, but pretty bad injuries. You have, at first, it was um, Andy Dalton, who wasn't, it was only a few weeks. He, he was He's playing right now as I speak. Um, you had Andy Dalton, who, of course, he broke his ankle. And then we have, not broke it, but somehow hurt it. And then you have uh, Kyle Allen, who injured his leg somehow and is now out for the rest of the season. And then you have Joe Burrow, who tore his ACL on his left knee and is now out for the rest of the season. So uh, there's a curse on FedEx. When you look at last year, um, I don't think anyone actually got hurt. Yeah. Oh, actually, Dwayne Haskins got hurt towards the end of the season. Um, and I think Case Keenum actually got hurt earlier in the season, too. Uh, so, and, and obviously the year before that, Alex Smith got hurt. Um, what's his name? Colt. Colt McCoy got hurt. Every single year, people get hurt on FedEx Field. Um, it is a curse. And then we went out in the second half, and yeah, I, we can say some good things. Our offense went out there in the second half and played really, really well. You can say that the fact that we held them, that we didn't allow them to score any points in the second half was due to the fact that Ryan Finley was in at quarterback. You can say that, yeah, our defense wasn't playing as well, and the fact that you know one of the only parts of their offense that was working got hurt says a lot about why we were able to hold them no points but then you look at offensively we went out there we scored 13 points the drive i mean uh, joe burrow got hurt on the third down so they punted right after that and that drive i think we were like five plays we were doing i think all of them were like first downs we had a really really good driving out a touchdown that had nothing to do with joe burrow getting hurt that was just us going out there and playing much better so the second half the way our offense played that was our fault yeah that was really really good our offense looked great in the second half which it has looked in t nine of our games. <laughs>
it, 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 I mean, I was talking about it looked bad in the first half and looked good in the second half. In the Cowboys game, it looked good in both halves. Um, it honestly did worse in the second half. Dustin Hopkins, let's go, man. He made a 50-yarder for the first time this season. Uh, he made like a 48-yarder and a 50-yarder, then he missed a 38-yarder, but it didn't mean anything. Um, it just kind of, you know, killed our vibe. Like, yeah, we're driving down the field. We, we're, we're winning. We're pummeling this team. Let's kick a field goal, you know, put a nail in the coffin. Kind of like with the um, Cowboys, the same thing happened. We were up 25 to, what was it, 3, and we were celebrating, and we could have just kicked a field goal, you know, keep pounding them, but no. It doesn't matter. We still got the win. I am not going to complain. We played pretty well. Alex Smith, he, he had like almost 200 yards, which, yeah, it isn't 300 that he's been putting up beforehand, but he definitely, I mean, he still played a pretty Good game, in my opinion. He had, I think, an interception and a touchdown pass. Um, he needs to work on playing, like, two-minute drills because at the end of the halves, whether it be first half or second half, he has played pretty badly. You look at last week, end of the, end of the game, he was helped out by a Lions penalty so much. It's like they, the Lions basically last week carried us to our own 50-yard line. He made a couple passes after that. Um, but really, and then you look at uh, the week before that, um, well, no, it was actually last week. He threw an interception um, at the at the end of the first half in the Lions game. You look at the game before that, obviously against the Giants, he threw two interceptions within two minutes at the end of the, that game. So, uh, obviously, he needs to work on that. But other than that, he is playing really, really, really well in the second half. I don't know what's happening in the first half. It's not, I mean, I don't know what is going on. It's like a whole other team goes out there. It's like we, I mean, we, we got like three and outs. Like after that, you know, fourth film I was talking about, three and out. Like really quick, like 15 seconds, three and out right after that. We got nothing done on offense other than one touchdown. One touchdown, which is pretty good. And it was all because Antonio Gibson is a beast and Terry McLaurin is a beast. Those two guys need to stick around. And now that we're seeing how good Alex Smith is, and if you wonder why I'm not talking about the Bengals, it's because this is my just Washington fan reaction. If you're looking for a recap of that game, that'll be out tomorrow. And then I'll talk about both teams a bit um, along with every other game. But right now, I'm a Washington fan. I'm going to talk about Washington, okay? Um, this is just a Washington fan ranting. This is irrational thoughts of a hopeful Washington fan. Um, the more I'm seeing, the more I realize that and also, I just want to point out that our defensive line was not the problem. We were putting pressure on Joe Burrow on, like, every single play. I think we had more than four or five sacks in this game. But, like, if you watched, the, the, I know the Bengals have, like, no O-line, but still, we were able to put pressure on him on most plays. Our defensive line was doing really good. Our secondary, though, did not play very well at all. In the first half. Second half, though, um, a defensive line kept on playing pretty well. Ryan Finley, obviously not a very good quarterback, so we were able to, you know, get that interception towards the end of the game just to pad up our stats. Um, so I think we, we won the turnover battle for the first time in a while. We had two turnovers. They had, well, we, we created two turnovers. They created one. Um, I don't know. If I said we have we had two turnovers, you could either see that as us. You could possibly see this as us turning the ball over twice, which we did not do. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, the more I'm thinking about, it, the more everyone's talking about how next year, um, if we don't make the playoffs, it's we end up going, you know, four and twelve and not making the playoffs. And I say and not making the playoffs because, as crazy as it seems, there is a. A small possibility, but it is definitely there that the team who wins this division is four eleven and one or four and twelve. I have looked. If I know, they showed a graphic on the screen at one time when they end during the Eagles game that showed just how bad the rest of our schedules are, or just how terrible the rest of our schedules are. Um, I think the Cowboys have the easiest schedule out of the all of us, and they are by far the worst one of us. Uh, the Eagles have the hardest schedule. So at this point, I think it's between. Washington, the Eagles, and the Cat and the Cowboys, the Giants, um, and I think I think it's gonna be really interesting to see at the end of the season, week 17, there is a Washington versus Eagles game, and it's like every single week I look and I look at like all of our um, like all of the games that our division has, um, and right now it's looking like that game could be winner goes to the playoffs. I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, right now though. Um, Okay, what I've been thinking, as we see Alex Smith plays better, everyone's saying that if we don't make the playoffs and we have an early draft pick next year, we should pick up Justin Fields or Zach, whatever his last name is. We should pick up a quarterback in the draft, early in the draft. Here's what I'm saying, and do not think I'm crazy for this. 
we have Alex Smith, who is playing really well. Yeah, he isn't amazing, but he's playing pretty well. So our, our quarterback at this time, it, the, the, I don't care what you think. In my opinion, quarterback is not our biggest need. Alex Smith is definitely better than, you know, uh, 10 of the 15. Uh, he's definitely in the top half of quarterbacks, in my opinion. Okay, think what you want. This is a, a irrational Washington fan speaking. And in my opinion, I do think that he is probably, you know, top 20, which is better than, you know, Dwayne Haskins. What I think we do is we go into this next season and we, we, we stock up in the first half. We either get, you know, one of the best wide receivers. We get one of the best O-linemen. We get, we stack up on that offense because our defense, uh, yeah. So we, we, we get some of our other needs. Because right now, I think our biggest needs are probably O-line and safety. Because in offense, I mean, we do have uh, Terry McLaurin and Cam Sims, yet they're not, well, at least Cam Sims and Logan Thomas, they're not very good, but they're not terrible. Our receiver core is, again, not the thing we need to worry about. We need to look at safeties. Troy Abke and Landon Collins are just not doing it for us. We could have signed Eric Berry, but we didn't. I don't know why. And offensive line. We cannot keep letting them get back there like that. Um, we have played terribly on the offensive line. So what I say we do is we go out there in the first couple of rounds, we get really good weapons for our offense and offensive linemen. I don't care if we have to trade to get more picks, I don't know. But in the first couple of rounds, we do that. First one, two, three, I don't know. And then the later rounds, and by later, I mean three or four, or I don't know, not really later, we pick up a pretty good quarterback. Some pretty good quarterbacks have came in the third or fourth rounds. Those are not, I mean, most teams are not going into the draft looking for quarterbacks. So if we go and, um, you know, pick up a quarterback in the third round, and we let him sit behind Alex Smith for a year, and you let him learn, kind of like Patrick Mahomes did, uh, yeah, we could, uh, and then we try him out the year after that. So what I'm saying we do is we go out there in the first or second round, and we pick up a really good offensive weapon, and maybe we pick up a boost to our offensive line, and then maybe the third round, fourth round. I say that we go out there, and then we get a pretty pretty good sorry um sorry whenever i i didn't mean to say wide receiver i'm gonna say safety or offensive lineman i don't i keep on saying wide receiver i mean safety or offensive lineman and then we get ourselves a pretty good quarterback um because normally in the first round you see you know maybe three four quarterbacks going second round maybe two so i mean there are six quarterbacks gone um at the most in my opinion and then you look at the third round you still have some good people to pick from even if we have to go in the first round get the best safety in the game that we're in college because you don't see very many people sorry my video cut out what I'm saying is that we go and we get a really good safety, a really good offensive lineman, which are our two biggest needs, or we could just go in the first round, get a really good safety, and then go in the second round and then get a quarterback. I just saying, I just saying, I'm not Jar Jar Binks, I swear. We don't have to get a top tier quarterback, okay? Yeah, people always go for those, but a lot of them are busts, okay? And what I'm saying is I, I, would, I would feel much happier with us waiting until the second, third rounds to pick up one of the better quarterbacks than to, you know, pick up a, a use our... If we have a top 10 pick and we pick a quarterback, I'll be very, very, very mad. But I, 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 and I, in my opinion, I don't think that we will pick up a quarterback in the first round because I mean, you look at the people who take, they took Montez Sweat, they took Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin. We have some pretty good people picking, uh, picking for us in the draft. We are pretty good. At, I don't know why my hand is flopped over like this. It's because I'm like imagining on the picks over here. I don't know. I don't understand it either. Um, <laughs> but I, I, sorry, I'm kind of going crazy. I'm not used to us winning. Um, next week, though, next week. Thursday, we have the main. It's so weird seeing Washington team on a commercial because normally they don't they don't talk about Washington. They keep that you know. Zoop. But now that we have the main, we're on the main stage. A game at 4 p.m. That's when most people are watching football because you know in the later game people are at home or they're eating dinner with their families. Uh, early in the game, it's just a bit too early. 4 p.m. is the perfect time. Um, that's the main stage, and that is when they are playing our game. And it's so weird to see it, but next week we're playing against the Cowboys who have Andy Dalton back. Yeah, but you saw we did against Andy Dalton earlier in the season, um, and now we get to do it again. Uh, I think we are at Dallas this time, which shouldn't change anything. I think we'll go out there, 
and I think we'll play great. And again, this is a Washington team spe talking. I don't know what my, you know, Thursday picks are going to, I don't know what my picks are going to be on. Oh, I'm going to have to release my picks on Thursday early. Oof. Um, I don't know what my, you know, picks are going to say, but right now as a Washington fan, I think we have a good chance that after Thursday, at least, we will be the number one team in the NFC East. Who knows what happens? The, 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 the Giants play the Bengals. Um, that'll be a pretty good game. So, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Honestly, there's a lot of times I don't know who I'd pick. Um, the, Bengals, the Giants are on a bye week. Um, let, let's just end this video before I you know, fall asleep. It's 6.30. I want to watch Sunday Night Football. Thank you, guys. Oh, so much for watching this video. We post NFL content every single day and only... A uh, tiny portion of it is about Washington, so you don't have to worry about that. If you just like football in general, subscribe here. If you're a Washington fan, subscribe here. Um, we post videos every single day. Predictions, which are unbiased. This is a very, very biased video that you just watched. My predictions, my recaps, my power rankings, not biased. Okay? Um... <sighs> <laughs> we also do uh, reactions to Thursday night games, reactions to Monday night games, all the stuff that you would see on a bigger channel you're going to see here. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you in my next video. In fact, I know I'll see you in my next video.